All right, let's talk a little bit about doing variations of our basic lifts and why we might want to do that. Hey, everybody, I thought I would chat with you guys and gals a little bit about this today. And you'll see me in the background, unless you're seeing this on the podcast. Uh, you'll see me in the background doing, you know, a few different exercises that are pretty close variations of some of our most basic uh, barbell lifts, right? Which would be the bench press, the squat, the deadlift, and the row. Uh, you know, and these are kind of movements that I, I think most people should be doing. They're good for our base building. So one of the things you'll see me doing in here is a reverse grip bench press, and you'll see me doing a Romanian deadlift standing on a deficit, uh, a safety bar back squat, and then, of course, doing some underhand grip or supine grip bent over rows. So when we start looking at a lot of these variations, the things to think about is that they work muscles from different angles. And, the, and as much as I always tell people, usually a couple different exercises, sometimes maybe three or four exercises, should be enough to hit every single angle of a muscle. And for novices, we like to use a basic exercise and just train it repeatedly, you know, just a base build, okay? But when it comes to maximizing muscle growth, the thing to think about is that working different angles can oftentimes reach muscle fibers that you haven't always been uh, fully stimulating. So again, one of the things that we can do when we start to add, tar, start talking about adding variation, you know, people oftentimes say, well, maybe I don't have as much equipment. You know, what variations can I do? You know, and it's like, okay, so let's assume you just want to work a flat angle on a bench press. All right, you just want to work a flat angle because you want the most overall development. You're not saying, hey, I want to decline for lower or incline for upper. You know, I just really want my whole chest to grow balanced. How do I do that? You know, because I'll oftentimes prescribe an incline bench to go with a flat bench. Well, doing something like a reverse grip bench press, right, with a nice wide grip uh, is a very different movement. You know, it feels different in the chest. And anyone who's done it, what's the things that you notice? Well, usually you feel a little bit more upper chest. That's what I usually feel. And then as far as even the triceps go, what feels different? Well, that long head. Right? Usually on the bench press, if we go by the research that we have, the lateral head of the bench press grows the most, right? The tricep. So that's what ends up happening when you do a lot of benching. Your lateral head grows, the long head gets neglected, so we usually need to do extensions for it. But what happens when you do that reverse grip? That long head, you just really feel it. And I'm not saying that because we feel it more that it's automatically growing more, but it's not a bad indicator. And I know that for me personally, the tricep activation and the chest activation just feel different. So by rotating this in or even doing it after your flat bench, you know, you can work a few different angles, right? You can work a few different angles, uh, different development in the arms, different muscle fibers get worked in the chest a little bit different. It's just a good way to get some additional muscle growth and make sure that we're working a wide variety of muscle fibers. Because what you have to remember, no one exercise, no one exercise fully works every muscle fiber in, in any given muscle. You know, there's always gonna be a few that maybe don't get uh, reached even when you reach muscle failure, okay? So also you'll see me doing things like uh, Romanian deadlift, why? And I love the conventional deadlift, it's my favorite exercise. Uh, RDLs probably hit the hamstrings a little bit better just because of the stretch reflex. Now, is the, the conventional deadlift a better overall builder? Yes, do I think it's probably better for glutes? I think that it is. Now, people will argue with that, I'm like, because uh, we're stronger, we can move more weight at it through similar ranges of motion. Well, let's take in the work. If it's not the hamstrings, it has to be the glutes, okay? So it's just, a, again, a different variation, shifts those ratios around a little bit. Let's just do something different. Uh, what about something like an underhand grip row? Oh, more bicep. And what about on an underhand grip row? I personally feel a little more lat than I do on the overhand grip. I feel more upper back when I take a pronated grip, okay? And it's not to say that on any sort of row we don't work the lats and, and the upper back. But what about individual muscle fibers in seeing things like the rear delts, lower traps, lats? Well, they're going to be worked a little different because of those angles. We may be hitting some fibers, other fibers. Now, me personally, I like to do some type of pull-up and some type of row on every back workout, right? Way to pull up and then a, a barbell row of some type or a dumbbell row. But again, that underhand grip row, a little bit different. It just hits different. 
All right, hits the ratios of upper to, to middle back a little more. Definitely works more bicep. It can be a nice variation, All right? Or we could even simply do a Pendley row versus a bent over row. That changes stuff around, All right? We can do variations and work these muscles a little bit different, and there's nothing wrong with that. And no, it's not about muscle confusion. It's that thing, that's not a real concept, but it is it is a case of us making sure that we're working some different muscle fibers so that we get overall better development. Okay? And, I, and I tell people, you know, the best exercise for any given muscle is to do two really good exercises and push them hard. But realistically, most muscles might need as many as three or four different exercises if we want to make sure that we work every single possible available muscle fiber, fully develop every head of a muscle, we might need as many as four you know, in a, in, a, in a few cases. So these close variations still work in that rotation, you know, so if we're gonna go for a second or a third exercise to work in, they're not a bad, a bad way to go, even though they're close variations and they're very, very similar. Now you also see me in here doing a safety bar squat. Um, again, I feel more back on a safety bar squat. I can't use as much weight, it's uncomfortable, it's awkward. But when you look at some of the studies, they tend to show that some of these variations like SSBs and front squats probably work the quads a very similar amount, right? They work the quads a very similar amount even though we're forced to use a lighter weight. What I like with something like an SSB, man, it really makes you notice if you have a back weakness at all when you're squatting while not allowing it to be the limiting factor. In other words, your quads still get lit up if you do a deep below parallel safety bar squat, but you feel so much more hit in the back, right? And, and it also limits the weight you can use unless you just have a disproportionately strong back. Uh, but again, the same thing since our torso angles change, everything changes, we may hit a few muscle fibers that we were missing, okay, on a normal back squat. Although I find they change out pretty well that a safety bar squat will carry over. If you, you did nothing but safety bar squats for a while and got stronger at it, your back squat will probably be hard as soon as you test it, right? Uh, just because it's, it's uh, so similar in a lot of ways, but it changes those ratios around. You know, we have different weak links that come out. You know, we can make the same case for a front squat. You know, sometimes a front squat, if, if you have the shoulder and wrist mobility and everything to do it correctly, a front squat can be a phenomenal exercise. You know, to re replace a back squat for a period of time or as a supplemental lift right behind it. Uh, you know, of course, I don't think that the front squat should be your primary. That's my opinion. I think the back squat in general probably brings a hair more to the table. But it still falls into the, into the category of a close variation that can bring a lot to the table. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you next time.